Well, hello, my name is Jason Webster. I'm lead commercial agronomist for Precision Planning, and I manage and direct the PTI farm, the Precision Technology Institute in Pontiac. And over the next few minutes, I just want to share a little bit about crop nutrition that, that we're using and implementing at the PTI farm. I want to address just a few short uh, bullet points. Number one, how crop nutrition is being addressed at the PTI farm. How do we determine how much fertilizer we're putting it on? How do we apply those nutrients or the fertilizer? And then let's talk about some individual results. Um, we'll look at specific programs, specific rates, things like that, and talk about what programs are actually doing the best for us. And then lastly, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the uncertainty that's in the marketplace when it comes to crop nutrition and certain fertilizer applications. So let's dive right into how do we figure out how much nutrition we need to put to a growing crop. And you know, we're very similar to all you folks. We soil test. You know, this is our fourth year at the PTI farm. So when we acquired the farm three years ago, we did some intensive soil sampling on the farm. We wanted to figure out where we were at on a fertility basis. And so one of the things that we look at is where are the levels at? Are we low? Do we need to build them up? If we can build them up to optimum levels, we feel that we can do an adequate job of getting optimum production. So the thing with soil testing, though, is, you know, if we're going to put a recommendation together, and this is what's happened for years, it's a twofold recommendation. Number one, we're going to look at the actual levels from our soil test and figure out, do we need to move them up? And if we do, that's build up fertilizer that we need to apply. Generally, at the PTI farm, we're looking at build up over a four-year time period because that's typically when we'll retest. But build up will move your soil sample uh, point values up to optimum levels. The other side of the recommendation is removal. In other words, what crop are you going to grow and what is the yield goal that you want? Once we get that figured out, we can figure out what that crop's going to remove and we can apply that nutrition as removal. But in the past, typically, you know, traditionally, buildup and removal has been part of a sound soil test recommendation. Now, we're doing some different things at the PTI farm. We're looking at soil health, and I think all of you would probably agree that we want to make soils healthier. I think of my two kids at home. You know, at some point, I hope they, they come to me and tell me that they want to farm. And so my responsibility right now is to make the soils better so when they get it, hopefully they're, they're higher producing. But to monitor soil health, we've got to, you know, take a look at, you know, cover crops, things like that. That's traditionally what we've done. Here on the screen you're looking at right now, this is actually a report card of a soil health assessment from a test that we, we did. We pulled some soil from the PTI farm, one of our high yield studies. We sent it off to Midwest Labs in Omaha, Nebraska, and they do some, some soil extractions with this. And we're looking at certain acids. We're looking at the biology of the soil. And... You know, if you look at the top right part of the screen, it shows that green bar. And the report card for the soil health assessment goes from a zero on the low side to 25 on the high side. And we actually scored a 28.2. So if this test is right, you know, I'm excited because this means we're doing some things to increase soil health. And hopefully that will continue to drive yields and, and we'll be making soils healthier in the years to come. So I can't wait for growers to come to the PTI farm. We'll be talking about some of these soil health uh, tests and procedure, uh, procedures that we're trying to do to, again, make soils healthier and more productive. Now, once we figure out how much fertilizer we need to apply to, uh, to a crop, we got to figure out how do you want to apply those nutrients. And at the PTI farm, we implement what we call a reallocation fertilizer program. I'm going to use dry fertilizer in the fall after harvest, and then I'm going to come in with the planter, and I'm going to apply a row crop liquid starter fertilizer. Now, we call it a reallocation because I can't put all my fertilizer in just one application. It's very similar to how you folks do nitrogen. Many of you folks are doing split applications in nitrogen through the growing season. And if you know you're going to make multiple applications in nitrogen, you're not going to put all of your nitrogen on in the first trip because you know you've got more trips to make. Throughout the growing season, dry fertilizer is just the same thing. So we soil test. We figure how much fertilizer we need. We will start with fertilizer in the fall, dry fertilizer in the fall. But we know we're coming in on the planter as an extra application, and so we will reduce our dry fertilizer needs in the fall to account for the fertilizer we're putting in 
on the planter with the liquid row crop starter. That's what's called a reallocation program. You know, it sounds easy, but you'd be surprised as we talk with growers from across the country, across the world. They're really not thinking about this reallocation, the split applications with dry fertilizer. It's more on the nitrogen side, but we really need to look at this because if we don't account for this reallocation, you're gonna apply more nutrients than what you need. And environmentally, that's probably a bad thing, right? I think we'd all agree with that. And then how about agronomically? Well, this is just gonna affect the pocketbook. You're gonna spend more dollars than what you need. And we definitely don't want that to happen. So that's what's called a reallocation program. We are looking at dry fertilizer as a broadcast application. We've, we've been looking at that for many, many years. That's kind of the status quo, if you will. But our preference with dry fertilizer would be strip till. And you can see the strip till rig that we have here on the left side of the screen. We're putting strips in, tillage strips, about eight inches deep, and we're placing dry fertilizer in the bottom of those strips. We get that high concentrated band of nutrients right there in the root zone, and then we come back at planting time and we put another high concentrated band of nutrients on with the planter. So that is our preferred way of doing it, two banding applications of fertilizer. Dry fertilizer in the fall, and then with row crop liquid starter on the planter. Now, how are we doing application on the planter? And you know, our, this is a picture of our plot research planter at PTI. And we're using three tanks and three pumps on this particular research planter. And I know some of you are gonna say, well, Jason, it's hard enough to get one tank and pump to work on a planter, let alone three. And I get you, I read you loud and clear. I've lived this as well. And I, I just thought I'd kind of break it down and show you how we're, we're setting this up, this three tanks and three pumps on our planter to apply different crop nutrition and kind of simplify how we're doing it. Let's go to the first tank, the very front tank. It's the largest tank on the planter. It holds just under 500 gallon, and that's going to be uh, liquid fertilizer for Conceal. Now, Conceal is typically a product that's going to handle products that can't go in the furrow. They're too salty. They're high salt products. They're not seed safe. So what do we do with Conceal? We have a knife that runs inside the gauge wheel of the planter. We're using existing real estate. Okay, of the planter. We're not hanging extra weights, extra coulters on our planters. We're using the gauge wheel and we put a knife right inside the middle of it. We can go in a single band or a dual band, whatever your preference is, but the point of application is three inches away from where we're placing the seed in the furrow and typically we're running it an inch and a half deep. Products that we're placing in this fashion is nitrogen, potassium, sulfur, boron, all products that are not seed safe that can't go in the furrow. And nitrogen is going to tend to be some of our higher volume products and we will put it in this fashion as well. I'll show you a quick animation. Look at the gauge wheel right here. Look at this the slit or the cutout right in the middle of the gauge wheel. That's where the knife resides on the inside. And as we start planting, you'll see the blue strips. That's our liquid application in the conceal. And so we're going three inches away from where we're planting the seed and going an inch, you know, inch and a half deep. And we're using those gauge wheels to help seal that product. And remember, I told you we were using nitrogen a lot of the time with this. And covering up that, that liquid nitrogen helps seal the product. That's kind of the reason we call this product Conceal. Now, to feed Conceal from the tank, so we got a liquid tank that goes um, uh, back to this pump. And we've got a hydraulic pump that's feeding Conceal. I'm using a hydro hydraulic pump mainly for volume. As I mentioned, we're running nitrogen. Typically, we're running 10 gallon, even up to near 70 gallon to the acre in some of our trials. So I need a hydraulic pump to get the capacity, the high volume per acre. It is the only hydraulic pump I have on the planter though, just because of the high volume. All right, let's go back to the planter. We've got two more tanks. I've got two smaller tanks. They're each 150 gallon. And these tanks and pumps are going to serve furrow jet. So conceal that we just talked about goes outside of the furrow. Furrow jet is going to apply nutrition in the furrow. And so furrow jet offers us three bands of application. However, I'm going to use one tank and pump to feed product in the center of furrow jet. So in other words, right next to the seed. Then my second tank, okay, my other tank that I've got for furrow jet, I'm going to use to apply in the wings. And so I can use the same product if I want to and put it uniformly in all three bands, or I can put one specific product down the middle and I can put another completely different product in the wings. It just gives us the flexibility of, of multiple products. 
Here's a quick animation of how FurrowJet works. If you're running a Keaton seed firm or quick attach, you just pop it out. We'll take the quick attach FurrowJet and pop it right in there. Very easy installation. You'll see the three lines on the back that give us our liquid application through FurrowJet. We're still running a mini Keaton seed firmer up front, so we still get our good seed to soil contact. And behind it, we start going to work placing lines of application. Again, one down the center, right next to the seed. And then look at the wings cutting through the sidewall. If we plant through wet conditions, these wings will cut through that soil density layer to help us close a little bit better on the back side. Here's an aerial view of the three lines of application slicing right through those sidewalls. And again, placing seed, uh, fertilizer right next to the seed. So that's our furrow jet crop nutrition, again, using two tanks and two pumps to come through. The pumps, we're not using hydraulic in this situation like we were with Conceal because this is typically a lower volume. We're running anywhere from a gallon to the acre all the way up to, say, 10 or 12 gallon, and I can get by with dual electric pumps just fine. These are, this is a Surefire tank and pump system. This has worked really good for us the last three years, but again, dual electric pumps on each of these tanks has worked very well for us. Now, once we pump the product, whether it's Conceal or Furrow Jet, once we pump the product to the planter row unit, I've got to measure. I need a regulator to control the amount of liquid on a per acre basis. And to do that, we're using V-Apply HD. We put V-Apply HDs on every row of the planter to control and to monitor the liquid fertilizer that we're applying. It's just like the 2020 with the planter, monitoring seed, the population, the singulation, downforce, what have you. We're doing it on a row-by-row -row basis. Why wouldn't we want to do it on a row-by-row -row basis with liquid fertilizer? So V-Apply gives us that ability. We're measuring the flow. We've got flow control, turn compensation. If you've got curves throughout your field, one side of the planter is going to be going faster, one's going slower. We're controlling the application on every single row. If you want to do variable rate prescriptions, we can certainly do that as well with the Apply HD. Here's a picture of how we installed it on our, our planner. And we get this question a lot. You know, if you're going to go three V Applies on every single row, that's a lot. Uh, what does it look like? And you can see the green lines on the right side of the screen. That's my Conceal. That's my V Apply uh, HD and the green line going down to, to the Conceal planner attachment. On the other side, you'll see the dual uh, V-Apply HDs, one for furrow jet center, one for furrow jet wings. We've got some flexibility with how we install this on the planter unit, but I thought I'd share with you just how we put these on the, the row unit and then the screens and filters to go along with, with this. It, it, and that's pretty important, too, to make sure we've got clean product going through V-Apply and ultimately through the planter attachment system. So in summary, we're using furrow jet center. We're using sugar, biological, some phosphorus. We transitioned to the wings of FurrowJet for more, more phosphorus-based starter fertilizer programs. We'll also put zinc in the wings as well. You could put that in the center as well, too, if you wanted to. But then Conceal is going to be those higher salt products, typically higher volume, like nitrogen, potassium, sulfur, and boron. That's how we're setting up our crop nutrition on the planter. So let's talk specifically about programs that we're running through FurrowJet. We get a lot of growers that say, all right, Jason, I, I bought a FurrowJet system. I got it on the planter. What should I be pumping through it for, as far as liquid fertilizer goes? Well, you know, I tell you, we've tested a lot, of, a lot of programs, a lot of products over the years. In 2020, we sure tested a boatload of different products. Look at the visual symptoms on this screen right here. The picture you're looking at is from 2020 at PTI. You can see right to the row where we've got certain liquid fertilizers applied through FurrowJet, and typically it happens every year. And we laugh when we see this. We smile. We know the starter fertilizer is going to work for us. And all along, we're thinking, what is this going to do for us yield-wise once we get the combines to roll? And I guess think about where we're placing this fertilizer with FurrowJet. You know, I think we've come a long way with application of liquid starter fertilizer because we're actually putting it where the corn plant wants it. This corn plant is, is almost V3 in, in, in growth stage, almost third leaf. In two leaves, we're going to be at V5, and we're going to be setting yield. The first yield determination. We're setting girth, how many rows round of kernels we're going to have on that ear. We do that at V5. And so what we want to do with FurrowJet is place that fertilizer right next to the seed, right next to those crown roots, and make sure if that plant needs fertilizer, if it needs nutrition, it can get it before V5, because if we slow this corn plant down before V5, before we set that round, that girth on that ear, we could actually limit production, lower yield potential. 
So this sets the stage up. If we're cold, if we have saturated soils early in the spring, this is some protection, especially with the phosphorus here, to make sure this corn plant doesn't have a bad day. Now, we tested a bunch of programs, as I mentioned earlier. And I know you can't read all these. We, we, we've sorted all the programs out that we ran through FurrowJet this past year, sorted out by return on investment. We've got some products that made us a lot of money, and we've got some products that didn't work so well, didn't return um, a lot of profit. If we summarize all the programs, though, that we ran, we increased corn yield, and we saw a positive return on investment. So we've got some programs that definitely have increased profit for us and uh, shown some really nice return on a per acre basis. I'll show you how to get all this data. Again, I know it's hard to read it on the screen. I'm gonna show you a way to get all this information here at the very end of the presentation. Let's go to Conceal now. We're running all kinds of different programs through Conceal. Remember, we're going through the gauge wheel on the planner with Conceal. Look at the placement, look at the blue dots. Totally different than FurrowJet. We're moving them outward three inches away from where that seed was, was placed, an inch and a half deep. And get this, guys. If you're planting corn at two inches, this placement is at an inch and a half. So we're a half inch shallower than where we planted the corn, but just three inches, either in a single band on one side or a dual band, both sides. But look at that crown root on that, that V3 corn plant. The root coming out at a 35 degree angle, just gonna hit that high concentrated zone of fertilizer, and we're gonna give her a boost again before V5 so we can keep this plant fed, keep it going, and try to get two more rows around on that ear for that first yield determination at, at V5. Now, when it comes to conceal, nitrogen has been the big horsepower nutrient for me. When we put nitrogen on the planter through conceal, it's offered us some really nice returns. And look at the road to road differences we, we've seen at the PTI farm. Dual band conceal on the right, you see those beautiful green plants, not hurting at all, not, 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 you know, they're getting all the nitrogen it can because we're putting it in what I call a luxury consumption state. And luxury consumption, what does that mean? I'm not putting on extra nitrogen, I'm not doing that. I'm just putting it dual band on both sides of the plant so it can get it easily. We're not forcing it to work. And we have it right there, it's like an IV, a shot right in the arm, and this corn can take advantage of it and never slows it down. The corn on the left, the surface applied in, that corn's gotta go and work for it to find it. And obviously, it hasn't found it yet, because look at the coloring difference and the height difference. This has actually slowed this corn plant down. And again, we mentioned V5 and that yield determination, that is going to affect that yield determination with slowing this corn plant down. That planter. <laughs> this planter that we use at PTI, you've got one at home too to plant your crop. A lot of you folks, well, that is, a lot of you folks say that's a planter that's going to plant seed and seed only. That's all we're going to do with that. Well, I'm doing that too, but guess what? I'm using that planter to apply nitrogen. And I will tell you, <laughs> this is my 34, 34th year of farming in 2021, and growing up as a kid, we never had liquid of any form on our planters, especially nitrogen. So I never ever could take advantage of some of the benefits of it. Now we've got a product like Conceal, we're coming in, we're putting nitrogen on the planter while we're planting corn, and this is why I'm saying it's been some big horsepower for us. Look at the yield response. And the best way I can describe this is, think about when we changed our nitrogen program to go from one and done programs, whether it was all anhydrous ammonia or whether it was all liquid UAN up front. We got smarter and we started side dressing nitrogen, split applications of nitrogen. And we saw a yield bump, and a lot of you folks are still doing this today because of that yield bump. In 2019, we were seeing 14 bushel yield gains by side dressing corn. Spoon feeding nitrogen in more than just one shot throughout the growing season. 14 bushel yield gains. Here, guys, here's why I say conceal with nitrogen on the planter has been big horsepower, because I'm getting another 14 bushel. Again, back in 2019, I got 14 bushel when I side dressed, but when I put nitrogen on the planter, I get another almost 14 bushel. And I don't have to choose between them, one or the other. I'm getting both. And that's some of the things I've never seen before on a planter because we never put nitrogen on the planter in our family farming operation. 2020, similar results. We see a 19 bushel yield result, yield bump by side dressing nitrogen. But when I put nitrogen on the planter as well. I'm picking up seven, eight, nine extra bushel of corn by having that dual band nitrogen on each side of the corn plant. 
So my recommendation for nitrogen at the PTI farm, this is how I set my trials up, especially my continuous corn trials. You see on the bottom left of this screen, you'll see that sprayer. I'll put my herbicide program out and I'll put 32% UAN along with it. For corn after corn, I'm using it to help break down that carbon penalty and spur that bio biology in the soil. Get it, get it going. And then when I come in and plant, I've got conceal through the gauge wheels of the planter and I'm putting on nitrogen. How much? I'm putting 25% of my total nitrogen needs on with the planter. I've got 25% from my weed and feed with the herbicide application. I've got half of my nitrogen before the corn even comes up out of the ground. When do we do the rest? We're going to do it in a side dress, just like we've always done. We've always side dressed our nitrogen, 50% of our total needs. And we can tweak that a little bit, too, based on the growing season and kind of the yield estimate that we think we're going to have. But a 25, 25, 50 percent split application has worked out really well. How well has it worked? How about $50 an acre? And I'm not talking just in 2020. Guys, we've been testing Conceal for four years now, 2017, 2018, 2019, and finally 2020. And on average, when we put nitrogen on the planter, we're improve, improving return on investment by $50 an acre. And ladies and gentlemen, when, when people come to the PTI farm and we have this agronomy discussion every single day, it's all focused on how do we make more money? This is a business. How do we make more money farming? How do we be more efficient? How do we be more profitable? And here, just by the way, we're placing a nutrient product. We're increasing ROI by $50 an acre. It's been major horsepower for me at PTI. Now, Let's talk about the rest of the conceal uh, nu nutrients that we're applying. We're putting on potassium, sulfur, boron. These are all the programs. And again, I know you can't read all this very well. It's okay. Again, I'll show you how to get this information here at the end of the presentation. But just in summary of all the conceal applications we did in 2020, we increased yield and we're bringing in a, a positive ROI. Here's the neat thing about it. You look at the ROI column. I sorted these by return on investment. Every single program that we put through Conceal in 2020, all of them made me money. There's not a single program that had a negative return on investment. They're all positive. Let's take the top half. The programs that worked very, very well, we're looking at increasing corn yield and look at the ROI. We're swinging the needle, moving ROI, okay? So you look at some of the, you know, the top ROI winner is over $100 an acre, and then the lowest one goes down to $4. But again, all of them were profitable in 2020. All right, let's talk about some high management corn yield trials that we've got at PTI. We're using crop nutrition to help drive yields. How much can we push corn yield at the PTI farm? Well, I'm going to tell you about two trials that we've got, or we had this past year at PTI. One's a strip-till irrigated study that's a corn soybean rotation. We'll start with that one first, and then I'm going to talk to you about a trial we've got that's conventional tillage Again, irrigated, but it's continuous corn, corn after corn every single year. All right, let's go to the strip-till plot. Um, and I guess first before we jump into that, I, I do want to show you conditions that we had at PTI this spring. We got the planter out and look at those gorgeous conditions that we had. You can tell we're running the furrow force closing system by the imprint that we have over the row, but some gorgeous conditions. And folks, we needed these good conditions because the last two years, it's been pretty painful. It's been tough conditions. This year, we were dry and it planted great. And, we, and really, it led for some really good emergence, which then led to very high ear counts. 368.2 bushel corn is our highest yield we collected at the PTI farm this year. We did it in the strip-till environment, irrigated, and again, corn after soybean rotation. And where is this high yield coming from? Well, you know, it is irrigated. We're using a Netafim drip tape system, um, kind of designed by Nutrigip Irrigation Systems. I've, I've leaned on these two companies to help us with our irrigation needs. And we're doing the irrigation not only for water. If we turn off hot and dry, yes, that drip tape's putting water down for me to feed that corn. But we're tissue testing along the way, too. And if I find kind of a cheek in the armor, if you will, where I need more nutrients, I can put nutrients through the drip system as well. So again, one more piece of flexibility for us. But that, I think, along with the crop nutrition that we did, helped drive us to over 365 bushel corn. 
Now, you'll see that auger cart right there, that green auger cart. We partnered up with Unververth, and this is the Brent auger cart. It holds a 1,000 bushel of corn. It's a pretty good auger cart for what we're trying to do at PTI. It's got scales on it. We can measure all of our trials, and, you know, 368 bushel corn, you end up with a lot of volume. You end up with a lot of bushels. And so we had to bring in some new resources this year. We had to bring in a larger auger cart. This is a walkabout mother bin. This is a 4,000 bushel auger cart, but we needed it for extra storage with this high yield 368 bushel corn. Now, let's look at the yield. Now, the status quo, the control on the study is just DAP and potash. Okay, that's, that's the fertility that we're driving. We're not doing crop nutrition in furrow jet or conceal like we've talked earlier, but we grew 330 bushel corn in that environment. That's pretty good, isn't it? Or is it? When we use furrow jet center, when we use furrow jet wings, and then partnered it with Conceal. Look what we did. We're driving corn yields by 30 bushel to the acre. And that's where I think these planter attachments, along with the crop nutrition, that's where it can take our yield levels. I would have been very happy with 330, but I would have never known that I could have driven yields higher up to nearly 370 bushel to the acre. This is kind of the protocol or the, the recipe I put together. And again, I know this is going to be hard to read for a lot of you, but I'm going to show you a way how to get this here in a second. But, you know, we're looking at crop nutrition, not just at planting, not just with some of the dry fertilizer in the fall, but it's nutrition all season long, spoon feeding. And this is what I used as my, my recipe throughout the growing season in this particular trial. And, you know, compared to our, our dry land corn, what we did here with the, the irrigation and the fertigation, in some of the tissue testing, we increased corn yields by over 100 bushel to the acre. And you look at the revenue of this. Huh? I get guys that will ask me, say, well, you got this high yield plot, you're growing 368 bushel corn, but with everything you, that you did, did you make any money? And I'm happy to say we did make money. How's over $200 an acre sound of extra revenue? That's net economic gains from this high yield corn. So we're trying to be somewhat practical in what we're doing, and we want high yields, but we want to make money doing it as well. Look at the size of the corn kernels from this study. Now, I want as many kernels as I can get per ear, but I'm really focused on how much they're going to weigh. Look at the size of these kernels. I've got kernels placed on a quarter, a nickel, a penny, and a dime. And look at how big these kernels are. And, you know, an interesting story. This fall, I'm delivering grain to the elevator as we're harvesting this field. And I get a phone call from the elevator and says, where are you getting this corn from? Because it is heavy. It weighs like lead. And I said, well, why do you say that? They said, this corn's weighing 61 to 63 pounds. I said, yep, I know. Because it's the high management that we've done. That's what's going to help drive, drive yield. That's why we were able to get 368 bushel corn, because this corn weighed like lead. We kept it healthy all season long. Look at the corn on the right of the screen. That's my high management program. Keeping it alive, keeping energy moving through the plant, ultimately getting to that ear to add test weight and yield. When we don't do our management program, look at the corn to the left. That's where we're dying and drying. We don't have the water. We don't have the nutrition. We can't keep it going, and it gives up. And that's what we don't want to see. We're trying to, to eliminate that from the farm. Here's my corn after corn study. Again, this is conventional tillage, not quite as good a yields as what I had in strip till in the corn soybean rotation, but nonetheless, over 330 bushel corn. There's my recipe again, all growing season long, trying to increase yield. We, we got some pretty good yield here, just not as good as the, the strip till, but overall pretty happy with those 333.6 bushel yields. You look at the status quo or our control on this particular study, you know, it wasn't as good as the strip till, but we're still picking up almost 59 bushel increases in yield. And did we make money on this one? It wasn't $200 an acre, but it was still pretty good, though. We're coming in on the plus side at $78 an acre. Actual economic gain. All right. I mentioned earlier, I want to talk a little bit about the uncertainty in the marketplace when it comes to crop nutrition, to certain fertilizers, dry fertilizer specifically. My question to you today is, does dry fertilizer offer yield increase? We've been using it forever. We've been using, I mean, that's the status quo. And so the question today is, does dry fertilizer offer yield increase? Does it offer too high salt loads? I've been saying this for a long time. Muriate of potash, 0060, pretty high salt load, right? It's chloride that we're putting on our soils. Is that too high of salt? That, that, that's a good question, I think, that we need to address. 
And then what about the removal and build that we talked about from a good soil test recommendation? What if we just look at the build versus the removal? What are the consequences of that? Those are the uncertainties that I want to talk about for a minute. I want to challenge the status quo and compare how we've been putting dry fertilizer on to see if there's a better way of doing it. You see that dry fertilizer rig on the screen, on the right side of the screen. That's how most, well, I shouldn't say most everybody, but a high percentage of growers apply dry fertilizer. And my question is, should we be doing it? This is a screenshot from Sean Castillo. He's a professor at Purdue University. He showed a group of, of farmers this data back in December and actually showed that potassium actually impeded soybean yield. I'm going to say this again, ladies and gentlemen. Putting potassium in front of soybeans actually reduced soybean yield by almost five bushel to the acre. Now, does that get you concerned? And we've heard numerous reports of this in the last one to two years of putting on too much potassium can actually hurt soybean yield. And this is something that I think we really need to take a look at. For years, me growing up, I, I would always hear growers say, well, I'm going to put two years of potassium in front of soybeans because they're a high potassium user. And then I look at data like this and say, well, should we have really been, been doing that? And I think we need to take a good, strong look at this. This is data in-house. This is Precision Planning's R&D department. Corey Mulbauer leading the charge on this corn after corn three-year study. We're growing corn every single year. This is a low fertility trial. Guys, this is a farm that hasn't seen a whole lot of fertilizer in its lifetime. Very low levels. And I want to set the stage up on this trial. We're going to start in the bottom right corner. We're putting nitrogen on only for this corn. We're not putting any phosphorus, not putting any potassium on at all, just nitrogen. And then we start putting potassium on only, nothing but potassium. Then we look at just phosphorus. And then remember the build and removal we talked about from our soil test, putting both of them together? We've got that in this particular trial as well. And then we separate those two out, just the build, just the removal. Now these bars you're seeing, you see the dollar amounts at the top of them. That's the actual economic gain from the program. And I want you to look at potassium. Specifically, look at the dollar amount. It's the lowest dollar amount, the lowest economic gain of any of the trials uh, that, that we're looking at here. And again, this is concerning to us. Um, nitrogen alone actually brought more dollars in than the potassium only. Look at the highest dollar value, $647. And what's that from? Just a bill. No removal, just a build program. So seeing some of the uncertainty in the marketplace, I'm, I'm thinking about PTI. What do I need to be testing? What do I need to be looking at? And so here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be comparing the status quo, the dry build and the removal that we talked about earlier, along with my reallocation. I'm going to do both of those things. And, you know, and I'm going to consider that the, the, the status quo of what most growers are doing. And then I'm going to go look at build-only programs because I really like the idea of just using dry as a build build my soil test levels to where I want, and then I can put my row crop liquid starter on with the planter to help address the removal. So we'll do that in just phosphorus only, and then just potassium only as well. And then I'll, I'll just compare it to no fertilizer at all. How many years can I go by with putting no fertilizer on? How much yield does it drop? And what are those dollars that I'm losing as a result of that? Or will it even happen at all? Then I want to look at some 100% liquid programs. This fall, I've had more phone calls from growers saying, hey, we've got a great extended season to do strip till. Should I be putting liquid fertilizer on as I strip and then come back with the planter with additional liquid? I want to start testing that because I don't know that we have any really good data on that. I know I don't at PTI, so I want to start building that into the program. And the liquid programs, I'll look at, at high cost programs. I'll take the same dollars I'm going to spend in the dry build removal dry program and we'll customize a liquid uh, program to fulfill that. And then I'm going to go kind of a low-cost program. What can I just get by with? I'd love to find that out using FurrowJet in Conceal to help drive that low-cost program. We'll start evaluating that as well. All of this will be banded versus broadcast. We'll use our strip till that we mentioned earlier. I, I just love the strip tillage that we've been doing and being able to put that high concentrated band of fertilizer in the bottom of that strip has just been fabulous for us. So I'm gonna continue testing broadcast versus band. Here you see we partnered up with Kuhn Kraus on a Gladiator strip till machi machine. We've got the Montag cart behind it holding our dry fertilizer. And as we make those beautiful strips, we're putting 
uh, fertilizer right in the bottom of that eight inch strip. We're running eight inches in depth on these strips, putting fertilizer right in the bottom. And that just makes sense. That's where the root zone's gonna be. Again, luxury consumption. Make it easy for that plant to go get that fertilizer. We did some studies of broadcast versus band this past year in 2020, and banding in the strips actually outproduced the conventional broadcast spreading by over 17 bushel to the acre, and that yield actually ended up with economic gains over $52 an acre. So we want to continue this, of the banding on the strip till bar and then coming in with another banding on the planter. And we think that's going to give us some really high yields. You've seen the, the high yields we've had from strip till this past year. We want to keep driving that even more. You know, we're looking at reduced rates. You know, I heard once, you know, years ago when I first started strip till and, and putting fertilizer in the bands, they said, you know, strip, uh, strip, you know, banding fertilizer, you can probably look at a 30% efficiency. In other words, that was telling me that maybe I could apply 30% less nutrients as a result of that banding efficiency but I don't know that I have any data to prove that, and so I want to build that in the PTI program. We're going to look at 100% rates of dry fertilizer in a broadcast versus the band, and I'm going to decrease that 100% rate in increments of 25% all the way down to zero. And we're going to set this up as long-term studies. We're going to put them side by side so we can really evaluate the efficiency of the strips. How am I doing the different rates well, this has been a problem in the past, having the right equipment to get this done, but we're finally set up. There again, there's that Kuhn Krauss uh, strip till bar, that Gladiator doing a great job for us, the Montag equipment cart behind it, but it's all driven by V-Apply Granular. We talked about V-Apply HD liquid on the planter a few minutes ago, but we've got a way to use V-Apply to control dry fertilizer as well, and we're doing it on the strip till bar. This has worked out really well for us. Getting flow controlled, being able to do variable rate prescriptions, and even blockage sensing. For you guys that have applied dry fertilizer before, you know it's important to know if you've got the appropriate rate and if you've got any blockage on any of the row units. So the apply granular is allowing us to do it. And there's other growers that are taking advantage of this too. Here you'll see Andre. Andre works for DeVolder Farms up in uh, London, on, uh, uh, Ontario. And they're putting a system on a grower's farm. They're going, went out to Tracy Farms, and they're putting the V-Apply granular on his Montag card and their strip-till machine. So this is gaining popularity, again, for growers who are putting dry fertilizer um, out in strips. Here's the blockage sensor that I mentioned a little bit ago. Again, knowing whether you've got a row unit plugged up, we want to be able to know that. We're monitoring through this V-Apply granular and the 2020 monitor system. If this happens, we're mapping it. We're seeing it right on the screen in real time, and we can stop and take care of this problem if, if we run into a blockage. Okay, to summarize everything, how in the world do you get some of the data that we talked about today? This went fast, didn't it? Fast and furious, a lot of information quickly. Well, there's, there's a couple different ways you can go and get this data as well as much more. Number one, you can be an Inside PTI member. We've got a program called Inside PTI. You can actually type that in to your phone. If you've got a smartphone with you today, you can type in InsidePTI.com and you can become an insider and see all of the work that we're doing with agronomy at the PTI farm. This is an online video series that we'll send directly to your email inbox. And videos will be throughout the whole season of 2021. This is what it looks like on the screen when you go to InsidePTI.com. If you've got a smartphone, again, that's what it looks like. You just put your first name in and your email address so we know where to send the videos to, and you are set up to be an Inside PTI subscriber. Another way to get data is from our 2020 PTI Research Summary. We haven't released this yet to the public. We wanted to get through Winter Conference and talk about some of the data first, but this data is going to go directly to our premier dealer network at Precision Planning. So go to your local premier dealer, and you can get this, this summary, almost 200 pages in 120 agronomy trials. So a very good research summary, and we'll show you what we've been working on over the last 12 months. So talk to your local Precision Planning Premier dealer to get this data, and you can also talk to them about how you can come out and visit us at the PTI farm this summer. We'd love to have you come out to our research farm in Pontiac, Illinois, 400 acres of on-farm research. We're right along Interstate 74, 120-plus agronomy trials. And you know what? We're excited to show you our new home 
our new home at PTI. We've been building a brand new facility over the last 12 months, and we've just finished it. We've just moved in, and I can't wait to have you come out in July, August, and September in 2021 to see this facility as well as our other agronomy trials. You're going to see our regional sales managers out in the field, their boots on the ground, showing you what we believe in and core principles and planning fundamentals. You're going to learn a lot. There's going to be a lot of information over the day, but you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. It's one of the things we strive for. I'll take you out in the field on an agronomy tour. It'll take about two hours, and I don't know if we'll get through all the trials or not because we just have a discussion all day long. Whatever you want to talk about, we'll talk about the issues you have on your farm, and hopefully we've got some trials or some technology that can help address some of those issues on your particular farm. But we'll have a lot of fun out in the field. Lastly, we've got a ride and drive sandbox area where you can take everything that you saw at the PTI farm, learning about the plots that we're putting in, the technology that we're using to do it, and then we give you the keys to a tractor and you can go plant and you can understand what the technology can do for you, how it compares to the technology that you, you have on your farm. But it's a well-rounded experience. This was the part that I really wanted to finish the day off so you could really understand and experience the agronomy and the technology. Lastly, I'd like to make a special announcement about a new construction project we've got at PTI. When you come visit us in 2021, you're gonna see our new grain storage and new grain drying facility. GSI is a member company of Agco, just like Precision Planning is, and GSI and Precision Planning are partnering together to put this grain storage and drying system up at PTI. And guys, I know you have questions about grain storage and how to dry it. Here we're going to have a live demo of grain moving through this storage facility, through the dryers. We can show you how it works, and so if you've got questions, you can see it working, and you can compare it again to what you have in your farming operation. So we're excited about bringing this as a new project in 2021. So some action items to finish up the presentation here. Number one, sign up for Inside PTI. Get those smartphones out, go to insidepti.com. We'd love to have you as an insider. Secondly, talk to your local Precision Planning Premier dealer to schedule a visit to PTI this summer. We'd love to see you in July, August, or September. We'll have a great time. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for allowing me to talk about crop nutrition and some of the things that we're doing at the PTI farm. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see my email address and my Twitter handle. Again, if you've got any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to us at any time. Again, thank you for attending Winter Conference, and thanks for allowing me to talk a little bit about crop nutrition. Thank you very much.